Brilliant. Okay, I think that's going. All right, so um, hey guys, this is uh, this is Lorraine Hamilton. Uh, she's a um, she's a mindset coach. That's, that's right, isn't it? That's what you do. Yeah. Um, and with regards to sort of um, my personal training clients, and certainly part of the demographic we work with at the moment for um, like the over forties, um, I massively believe that um, mindset is the biggest thing for everything. If you've got I've got the mindset, then you can't basically you know move on. You have all the best tools in the world, but if you're not in the right frame of mind, you're not going to really achieve anything. Um, so I brought in Lorraine to, to help us with that. Can you just tell us a bit about yourself, please? Sure. First of all, thank you for having me, Gavin. It's really great to be here and, and talking to, to your audience about mindset because it really is the key to everything, I think. You know, we can go so far with the technical aspects of any goal that we're trying to set, whether it be in health or whether it's business or whether it's professional, but unless we can get out of our own way, then we're always going to come up against stumbling blocks. So I've been working in this field for 11 years this year um, with a particular flavour on behavioural change for patients of weight loss surgery. Um, I've written a book on the psychological blocks to weight loss as well and um, I really enjoy bringing this area of personal development into the health arena because we're just not talking about it enough. So I'm thrilled that, that you're bringing it to your audience and, and really helping them out with their mindset challenges. That's awesome. So could you tell us a bit about the people after the, uh, the gastric bypass surgery, what sort of things you do with that? Yeah, absolutely. So what I do is I teach a retreat every month. So we have um, an in-person live retreat where we take patients who have are at least four months to two years post weight loss surgery. So either a gastric band, but more often a gastric bypass. Um, because we recognize that surgery only fixes the plumbing. It doesn't actually do anything with the behavioral change that is necessary to support long-term weight loss and sustainable mm -hmm. weight loss and all of the health issues that can be negated by weight loss surgery. So without doing the mindset, without doing the behavioral change work, then it doesn't stick. And obviously that's devastating for patients who've gone through weight loss surgery because it is definitely not the easy option. So we take them through a, a four day journey um, on identifying their values, on identifying their patterns of self-sabotage. We teach them mindfulness and meditation techniques, um, as well as things like communication techniques so that they can actually go back to their lives equipped to ask for what they need in order to be successful. That's awesome, actually, because I can imagine if people had this sort of information before they had the surgery, they wouldn't have to do the surgery, would they? Some of them, they, yeah. they would negate the need for the surgery, yeah. yeah. Exactly yeah. right. So, um, so I've got a couple of topics um, I just want to ask you about, really, okay? So, and, and as we spoke about before, we want sort of like actionable kind of tips around that as well. Um, yeah. So the first one, first one I've got is, like, like everyone you know, I've worked with, they usually start off with, a, like, a big hiss and a roar, um, and, they, you know, they're all really motivated, and... What kind of happens, I think, is that, you know, it's, it's, it's their mood will last for uh, maybe a couple of weeks and they're really, really, really into it. And then they start to lose that motivation. But what, what sort of things can you tell us about that, losing motivation after you start? Oh, this is a willpower question, right? That's right, yeah, willpower. <laughs> willpower. Do you know, Roger Baumas, Meister, was a psychologist and he ran a, a study on um, on willpower. I won't go into detail on it because we don't have a huge amount of time, but it's worth looking up. Um, and he basically proved that we run out of self-control or willpower. So a bit like if we're driving a car, we need to, at the beginning, spend a lot of energy on the controls and a lot of concentration on what we're doing with the controls. But as you get more practice with it, you can spend that energy on observation and being more aware. We only have a finite amount of willpower or self-control. So if you are embarking on a program that requires constant willpower and from um, from my perspective, when I was writing about dieting, that kind of traditional deprivation style diet, the way that that works is to constantly deprive. So you constantly have to have willpower. 
mm. and you run out. Yeah. You run out. Right. So what um, is a different way to look at that is that you have created your reality as it is now over a period of time. So the behaviors that you are doing that are contributing to where you are now are unconscious. You're doing them without thinking about it. It's a habit. Okay? Yeah. Um, we need to unlearn that habit and that's possible to do, but we need to do it with small changes because making grand changes is like learning to drive. Right. It's like, it's too much yeah. so we need to do it slowly and steadily which is why changing habits is such an important part of what we do so with regards to what to do when you're running out of willpower um, and running out of focus to make those changes there's an exercise that it's not sexy it's very simple <laughs> but basically I ask my clients when they're setting a goal to give me 50 reasons why they want it. Okay, yeah. Right. And there's a, there's a reason for asking for so many reasons, okay? Because the first few are just conditioning. You know, it's things that we think we should, there are should reasons. Oh, I need to lose weight and be healthy right, yeah. because I'm getting older or because I'm, I'm at risk of type 2 diabetes or these are the shoulds. But there's a whole layer of stuff underneath that. So I get them to write 50 reasons. And I tell you, when you're starting to feel that things are getting too hard, you pull out those 50 reasons, yeah. it's really motivating. Yeah, that's actually really awesome. I've got, I did a little video a while back, um, and my clients now talk about five whys, five whys principles, same sort of thing. But yeah. 50, that's, um, you're digging deep right there. Yeah, yeah. And, and don't get me wrong, it gets challenging, but then you kind of reach a point yeah. where suddenly you could do 100. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, and I think a lot of it as well. People, as you just said, they say, oh, "I want to lose weight to fit into my jeans," but that's not the reason. It's more of a confidence thing or self-image thing. And when you dig down, you start to find that emotional reason, I guess, and then which will help you a bit further. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I mean, that's the playground. That's where yeah. we're really starting to uncover those core beliefs of, you know, I'm not worthy. I'm, I'm, right, not, yeah. I'm not lovable. I'm not this, and yeah. that that's when we can really make some huge changes yeah 50 reasons okay awesome so that actually is quite nicely into the old habit change so i'm um when i go with, with my clients and stuff what i try and teach them is to is pick one thing pick something that they can do easy to get a small win and once you do that over time you know that small win becomes easy anymore so for me um when i started off i was really overweight and everything else i started going to the gym and now seven years later i just go to the gym now it's like brushing my teeth i just brush my teeth it's not willpower um so with regards to habits what's your, what's your sort of insight with habits i know it sort of falls on from the last question a bit yeah yeah no, absolutely. well the, the thing that we need to realize is that we have a strategy for everything that we do okay we've got a strategy for getting out of bed in the morning We've got a strategy for getting dressed. You know, you always put the first leg of your trousers on, you know? That's right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we have yeah. a strategy for everything that we do. And we, as I said, mentioned in the after the last question, we've got a pattern that we use that has become so familiar that it's unconscious. Mm -hmm. But when you bring awareness to how you get to where you are, and I'll explain that in a second. But when you when you bring awareness to that, you can start to unravel it. And by unraveling it, you can begin to change it. Because remember, we're talking about small change, because small change is what's sustainable, just like you said, one thing. Yeah. So this um this pattern that, that we have is, you know, well, how do I know? that it's time to go to the fridge and take something that I know is going to sabotage my goals. Yeah. Okay? So what happened right before that? Oh, right before that, I had a phone call that surprised me. Okay, so now we've got a, an emotional response to a trigger. So that's a, just a very basic explanation. But with time, unraveling the behaviors that are not helpful to your future goals can give you insight on how to build habits towards the ones that you do want that will support your goals. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. Um, I read um, a really interesting book a while back uh, called The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. 
and uh, he breaks it down really well. So he, everything a habit to habit loop so is a cue, um, an action, and a reward. Um, and what he talks about in there is obviously trying to change the sort of middle part of that habit loop. Um, you know, and I, with some of my clients, I had a really good success with one of them. Um, it was change. So her morning sort of routine was orange juice for in the morning. So what I what we did was we switched an orange instead of orange juice because it gave her the same sort of you know the, the same routine and reward of the sweetness of the orange, but obviously a bunch of a bunch of calories. Um, and that's a really simple way I, I found it sort of doing it. It's not not that easy all the time though. Um, but, but yeah. No, absolutely. You know, I, I had a client who was doing really, really well in a lot of areas, but she could not get past um, having a muffin at morning tea. So yeah. it's like this muffin thing was exactly as you described. And what I said to her is like, well, don't deprive yourself of the muffin, but every time you have that muffin, I want you to have something healthy with it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, and she's like, as well? Was it not a switch out? I said, no, I want you to have it as well. Because yeah. I knew that everything else that she was doing was supporting that healthy habit. And yeah. by adding that healthy salad or piece of fruit in at the same time, eventually the muffin yeah. would seem less attractive. And that's exactly what happened. Well, I like that. That's good. That's really good. That's a really good way to do it. That's awesome. Cool. Okay, so moving on to the next one. Okay, so... What we also what we also find as well with with human nature, I guess, you know, when we hit a sort of a habit, uh, sorry, um, a setback, we tend to kind of give up, I guess, um, because it just becomes a little bit too hard. So, like one of the things I try try with my clients is to sort of instead of looking forward to how far you got to go, look back and see sort of you know how far you sort of come, because that's going to help the motivation. So, with regards to setbacks and things, what what sort of advice can you give us around that? Um, is the very yeah. first thing, yeah? Yeah. So that's exactly the time to dig that out. Um, it, and also exactly what you described. I talk about, um, you know, that you can't eat a whole elephant just one bite at a time. Yeah. So it's about chunking those goals into smaller goals and taking micro actions. Because what happens when we try and take a, make a big change is that we're actually hardwired to stay where we are. So our, our 100,000 year old brain, the instinctive part of our brain where our fight, flight, freeze trigger lives, mm -hmm. that's still running the show a yeah. lot of the time. So whenever we try and do something too big, then we will self-sabotage because it triggers the fear center, which puts us into fight, flight, freeze, and fight, flight, freeze in today's world looks like procrastination, perfectionism, self-sabotage, all of these things. So when you have sabotaged your goals and you're thinking, oh, it's just too hard to pick it up and go yeah. on again, it means that you're trying to take too big a step. Yeah. So you need to chunk it down into smaller and smaller steps. Because... We need to fly under the radar of that fear center. And the way that we do that is by taking teeny tiny little steps towards yeah. our goals. Yeah. Similarly, what you described is exactly one of the exercises that I give the participants at our retreat. If they're finding it really hard to look forwards, I say, well, do you know what? I want you to write a huge list, like a toilet toilet roll paper list. Yeah. The things that you've done to get you to this point, I want you to get so granular with those tasks so that you can begin to, to create. What I'm really doing is getting them used to breaking things down into such tiny little steps that they can then apply that going forwards. But I also want them to see how far they've come because weight loss surgery is not the easy way out. No, that's right. Yeah. 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 Exactly so right. exactly what you described, I, that would be my advice too, but also the 50 reasons why. All right, I'm going to ask you a bit of a random one there, to see if you uh, keep on your toes. So with the 50 reasons, okay, if you're like me, I'm, I make lists of everything, okay? so i got all sorts of folders and stuff. So these people are going to write 50, 50 things, boom, and they're like, yeah, we're good to go. But then it gets saved in a document somewhere, and then over the course of a week or two weeks, it sort of gets pushed to the background. So... Like, what, what's your sort of um, what's your sort of angle on having it to hand? I guess so. You need obviously to have it available. Do you know what I mean? Because um, I'm looking at you right now. Oh, is that right? It's behind the camera. I have I have mine in a frame. Yeah. 
Um, so, you know, you can call it affirmations. I call yeah. them limitless beliefs. Yeah. Um, and then for other projects, I have my 50 reasons why. So I actually have my vision board in one frame yeah. and my limitless beliefs in another frame and they sit yeah. side by side in front of me the whole time. Yeah. So it really is, vision boarding is something that I resisted for a while and then I did it and I was quite yeah. amazed at just by setting that intention, not really necessarily creating a task list and a project management plan, yeah. Yeah. how many of those things that I had on my vision board had happened yeah. in the past year. Yeah. So by setting that intention and it just being aware, you're aware of it because what you focus on expands. Okay, yeah. so if you have it in front of you, you don't necessarily need to do a huge amount of active work towards all of the 50 reasons why, but they're, they're going in. And one thing that you need to know about your unconscious mind is that it is extremely um, obedient yeah. and it will work tirelessly for you. Yeah. By having those 50 reasons why framed in a positive way, it's very important that they're framed positively. Yeah your unconscious mind will go and find evidence to support them That's without right, yeah. you having to do anything, yeah? But if you frame them negatively, it will do the same thing. It will go and find evidence to support the negative. So write your 50 reasons why in um, positive language and have them somewhere where you're looking at them all the time. Yeah. Problem position. All right, that's awesome. Easy, thanks for that. So, obviously, when... Um, when uh, we people want to lose weight, okay, they go, I, I, I want to do it in 12 weeks, six weeks, five weeks, I got a holiday, uh, I need to lose weight for my holiday. But obviously, it's quite short sighted because, yes, you might lose weight for the holiday, then you go and then you smash it on the holiday, and then you're back to square one and you're still miserable again. So, what sort of tips have you got for focusing on or even doing things long term as opposed to just going crazy for a short amount of time to do it for that one? that one sort of time, what's your sort of advice around that? Um, a couple of things really, um, one is just to recognise that you probably have gained the weight over a long period of time and yeah. so um, give yourself a chance to, to lose it, you're still going to lose it quicker than you gained it, so just be aware of that. Um, and the other thing is, is really around um, shooting for your plateaus yeah right? so celebrate your plateaus yeah because i think when we reach plateau we start to question oh we're doing something wrong or this is too hard or you know but actually what's happening when you're plateauing is that your body's adjusting hormonally to where it is now mm -hmm. so the longer you plateau for the less likely you are to regain so it's just trust in why you're doing it and those deeper reasons for why you're doing it yeah, yeah. And, and just celebrate those plateaus because you will start to move again. Yeah. Um, but be realistic in what you're actually um, asking of yourself. And, you know, it is so that I fit in my shorts on my holiday this year, the be all and end all, or is it so I fit in my shorts every holiday, every year? That's right, yeah. That's a good one. I actually like that. Celebrate your plateau. That's good. That's I like that because it's true, isn't it? Because well, I, um, I had a client. Uh, she's done amazing. She's lost nearly thirty kilos now this last year, which is amazing. So, but they were, at the beginning, she was hitting plateau. So for just only a week or so, a week or two, she wouldn't lose any weight, and then she'd be, oh my god, I've lost any weight. And and but actually, if I'd known about that, I said, actually, your body's adjusting now, which is brilliant. You've got to a place now where your body's starting to react. I like that. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. I bought that roughly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So, so okay, that's that's awesome. I think some of those are really insightful, and obviously you're going to help people a lot with that, with uh, with getting getting past their um this sort of you know initial starting and keeping them motivated long term. So, with regards to that, where, where can we find you, Lorraine? Where where are you? You can find me at lorrainehamilton.net. Um, I, I, my website is quite business focused because I work with a lot of entrepreneurs as well but yeah. um, a whole raft of my business is around helping people with exactly this stuff because it does not come back to mindset. At the end of the day we're all people and yeah. we have 
have the same conditioning, we all have the same challenges, and we all have the same stories that we tell ourselves. And yeah. those are the things that are going to get in your way, regardless of whether you're trying to lose weight or whether you're trying to get promotion or whether yeah. you're trying to build a business. So right. Lorraine at LorraineHamilton.net is my email and LorraineHamilton.net is my website. Oh, that's awesome job. So that, that, that book you, you said about is, is it the physiological block to weight loss? This one. Oh, that one. Oh, well, good on you. <laughs> awesome. So is that in the stores or is it on your, on your website or was that? It's not actually currently on my website. I'm, I'm um, considering doing a little bit of an update to it. So oh, okay. if you're interested in the book, then please email me and I will make sure that I can let you know how to get a copy of the book um, yeah. before it goes into its next iteration and then we'll have a nice shiny new website for it. Fantastic. All right. Well, there you go. That's um, that's our interview done. Good job. <laughs>